Welcome to An Architecture, the built environment of a stateless society. My name's Tim. I'm an architect living in Boston. And I'm Joe. I'm Tim's brother, and I'm an engineer living in Adelaide, South Australia. In this podcast, we're going to discuss the concept of anarchism and how governmental actions and non-governmental alternatives can shape the physical world around us. This is episode zero, Breaking Ground. This is an introductory episode where we're not really going to get into too much of the content that we'll be discussing in later episodes. However, we will give you a brief overview of who we are, why we're doing this, and what you can expect to find in some of the later episodes. We'll start by telling you a little bit about ourselves. Again, my name's Tim. I am a registered architect with 13 years experience working in New Hampshire in the Boston area. I've primarily worked on institutional and commercial projects uh, with a specialty in healthcare architecture, but I've done a little bit of residential work as well. As a project manager, I'm involved with all aspects of a project, working with the client from the initial conception of the project through all phases of design, and then coordinated with the contractors during construction to make sure that the project gets built right. And again, my name is Joe. I've got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. I spent about eight years installing audiovisual and IT systems, specifically in planetarium theaters, as well as uh, other large format theaters such as IMAX. And so that involved projectors, sound systems, lighting, control systems, as well as computer systems such as render farms. That role involved quite a bit of travel, both domestically within the U.S. as well as internationally. Probably the most notable project that I've worked on was the Queen Mary II cruise ship which at the time was the largest cruise ship ever built, and to my knowledge is still the only one that has a planetarium on board. In that role, my responsibilities ranged from everything from pulling and terminating cables to documenting systems to doing a little bit of system design, some of it on the fly as you tend to do in the field, as well as project management and managing small crews of other installers and coordinating with customers as well as contractors for projects all over the world. So these travels eventually brought me to Australia, where my wife is from originally, and we moved down here in 2008. For the past six years, I've been working as a sales engineer and estimator in the energy industry, basically working with customers to come up with concepts and proposals for small to medium-sized power generation solutions. We didn't mention that we're actually twin brothers. Uh, We grew up in New Hampshire, which some of you may know as the live free or die state. And I don't know, maybe there's something about seeing that on every license plate that you drive by that starts to uh, <laughs> that starts to build it into your consciousness. There were also no <laughs> seatbelt laws during our childhood, so <laughs> so we had a, we had that little taste of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> we're both musicians, and we've been recording and mixing and producing audio since probably about 14 years old. So we already had most of the stuff we needed for a podcast, and Joe's gotten pretty good over the years at the editing aspects of, I think, everything we need to do to get this thing produced. Yeah, my experience tuning sound systems in IMAX theaters helped out a little bit there as well. (laughs) Hopefully that comes through in the sound quality of the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, our podcast is best listened to in a planetarium. Yeah, on an IMAX theater. Yeah. If the sound quality doesn't sound great on your headphones, it's your fault. (laughs) (laughs) you're just not giving it the medium it deserves (laughs) right as tim said we're both musicians and all the music that you'll hear in this podcast is music that we've written and recorded ourselves let's give a little background about how we both became interested in these ideas of anarchism beyond the new hampshire license plates yeah and by anarchism it's important to understand that we're not talking about guys running around in the 1890s with pointy mustaches throwing bombs at things. Hopefully, if you stay tuned for the next few episodes, you'll gain a better understanding of exactly what we mean when we use that term. For me, I started looking into some of these ideas probably around 2004. I was a couple years out of college. I had started working. I started a 401k, so I was starting to get a little more interested in financial markets and economics and was also looking for something to listen to uh, while I was drafting wall section details in AutoCAD during the day at work. That was before podcasts really existed. There might have been a few around then. But none, none with anywhere near the popularity that this one's going to have. <laughs> right. I think the first reference I heard for it was, 
was an AM radio show in New Hampshire at the time, hosted by a guy named Gardner Goldsmith. I heard him interview somebody about the public education system, and they were both being very critical of it, and that struck me as odd. I thought of all the things to criticize government about, that certainly public education is one of the best things that government does. So that in particular piqued my curiosity, and I started reading a little more about some of these ideas um, and found some other resources such as Mises.org, which is M-I-S-E-S, named after an economist, Ludwig von Mises, which had a lot of audio content that I could listen to at work. So for me, this podcasting medium that we're now starting to get involved in was how I first, even though it wasn't called podcast at the time, that was how I first came to learn about a lot of the ideas we're going to be talking about on this show. And as for me, um, there's a saying among the sort of libertarian anarchist community that it usually starts with Ayn Rand and it usually ends with Murray Rothbard. And now if you're not familiar with those names, uh, don't worry about it. We're not going to really dwell on that, but that pretty much explains the path that I took. A friend of mine loaned me Atlas Shrugged, which is a book by Ayn Rand, when I was in college, probably sometime around the year 2000. And I read that whole book and it really, I don't know if I want to use the term woke me up, but I guess it, until then I considered myself I guess, politically apathetic. And uh, having read that book, I guess it, it inspired me to take a closer look at things and apply a bit more critical thinking to my views. However, it really wasn't until several years later that I actually found out about the concepts of anarchism, which are a bit removed from Ayn Rand's personal views. I think it was around 2008, uh, which was about the time that the whole Ron Paul thing was happening. Although I didn't really get into this stuff until after that had, had pretty much all blown over memory, I think Tim and I were talking about economics or something. And again, around the time we were having this whole economic crash, and kind of like Tim did, I decided that it might be a good idea to learn something about economics and financial markets so that I uh, have some idea what to do in the event of the next crash or whatever. Tim and I happened to be talking about some of this stuff. And since he was already a little bit further down that path than I was, uh, he guided me to some resources, again, like the Mises.org website, um, as well as a few others. And I started looking into that on my own as well. And for me, once I started reading into all this stuff, it really helped to synthesize a lot of the ideas that I had been kicking around ever since I had read Atlas Shrugged, but hadn't really uh, fully come to terms with. I found that in the, the writings of guys like Ludwig von Mises and Murray Rothbard, a much more down-to-earth philosophy that I thought made sense and that, that went a long way to explaining some of the events that we were seeing at the time. We'll put a link to some of the resources and authors that Joe and I have been interested in on the website for anybody who wants to delve a little further into some of these ideas. As I was exploring some of these ideas, now I was living in Australia at the time, but Tim and I would email each other back and forth with some of the typical kind of debates that libertarians or anarchists tend to have with each other, such as, you know, do dolphins have rights? <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of money is real money? <laughs> How deep should your bomb shelter be? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do a whole episode on that one. <laughs> yeah. In mid-2014, Tim came up with the idea to start doing a podcast, which would specifically focus on issues related to the built environment from an anarchic point of view. From memory, I think at the time he actually tried to start doing this sort of, you know, guerrilla podcasting where he like tries to record something on his iPhone while he's driving to work in the morning with terrible audio quality and probably even worse content. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I've erased all those files from existence. <laughs> at least I hope I have. Yeah, they're in the cloud somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> so after a couple of attempts uh, where he, I think, was dissatisfied with the results, he emailed me and asked if, if I'd be interested in doing a podcast with him. And I thought it was a great idea. So, so we set it up pretty quickly and started rolling. Yeah, for us, I think it was just seemed like a, a project that the two of us could collaborate on while we're living so far apart. Just a way for us to keep in touch with each other and geek out on these ideas of anarchism that we've both been interested in over the past few years. So as I mentioned, it was over a year ago that we came up with this idea and we're only now in early 2016 just releasing it. And what this means is that it took us over a year to plan, record, edit, and produce five podcast episodes. Right. But you've got to, you've got to understand that the way that we record these is 
I get up at about 5.30 in the morning on a work day <laughs> while Joe's sitting down at 9 o'clock at night with a glass of wine to start recording an episode. And so we'll sit down once a week or less than that for an hour session, which gets us about 45 minutes of productive time, which probably gets us about 10 minutes of worthwhile content <laughs> with these recorded sessions. That's about right. And so you can do the math there and try to figure out how long that would take to put together an hour, hour and a half podcast. Well, and not to mention, uh, once we've done that, for every hour that we record, it probably takes me three hours to do some of the editing and mixing. That's if I'm working at a pretty good pace. Right. Plus there's time spent in kind of researching and outlining and just developing the content that we want to talk about on the show, which neither of us have time for. But bear in mind that we both have family obligations with young kids, as well as our full-time work schedules. So really, this is a hobby that we have somehow convinced our wives will one day make money. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, they allow us an hour a week to actually sit down and, and work with each other on it. We haven't actually worked out that monetization part yet, but don't worry, it's coming. Yeah. I just want to make a, a quick note about the sound quality that you'll hear in this podcast. As we mentioned before, it's really tuned so that it sounds best in an IMAX theater. So if you don't have the opportunity to bring your podcast into an IMAX theater and listen to it, then, then that's, that's your fault. You're really doing yourself a disservice. There's nothing we can do to help you there. However, if you are some sort of an audiophile, then you, you probably hear a bit of inconsistency throughout some of the sessions. For one thing, Tim's recording studio is right next to his furnace. <laughs> so every now and then this thing turns on, it sounds like a jet engine taking off. In addition, at 6 a.m. in his house, his kids are stomping around upstairs. Mm -hmm. And every now and then we have to stop and just, just wait for the uh, earthquakes to subside. I guess another factor that goes into this is that Given that the two of us have never really done much public speaking before, we end up doing quite a bit of retakes and outtakes. As a result, once we patch it all back together, some of the editing might sound a little bit choppy if you're very discerning. <laughs> or, or not all that discerning. <laughs> I guess just be warned and, and bear with us as we're sort of uh, learning our way through this and, and trying to get better at it as we go. I think a similar note on the presentation it seems like making a podcast is kind of like making pancakes. It's like the first one, you just let it burn <laughs> and kind of warm up the pan. Then the rest of the pancakes start to get better. I think our podcast is like that as well. The first episode and into the second and third episodes even probably sound a little bit more scripted. And as we got into the later episodes, we tried to work on being a lot more conversational. So as we mentioned, we're recording this episode zero after we've recorded episodes one through five. Um, the reason we did that is we wanted to develop the content first so that we could give you this introduction to let you know what to expect and also to talk about things like our website and social media, all that stuff that we hadn't had set up uh, when we started this project. So we'll give a little synopsis of each of the episodes that we have recorded so that you can know what to expect and maybe jump to one that sounds interesting to you. The first three episodes form a series that we're calling the Foundation Series. They're really an overview and outline of a lot of the ideas that we're hoping to delve into in more detail in later episodes of the podcast. For the structure of each of those episodes, they each have an introduction that's more of kind of an audio essay, um, and then we jump into the dialogue. So if you get a few minutes into it and you're not really sure where things are going, uh, feel free to jump ahead to more of the discussion a little further on in the episode. Episode one is called Planning the Ruins, the Built Environment. So this is a very basic introduction to the built environment, as well as to the podcast itself. So you probably hear a little bit of what we've already discussed in this episode. However, we do get into much more detail about what the built environment is. And we also introduce what we call the scales framework which is a way to conceptualize the built environment by focusing on different scales, such as your house, your neighborhood, city, and larger regions. Episode two is titled The Grid, Problems with Government. The introduction gives a historical example of how the built environment in the United States has been significantly influenced by one kind of obscure aspect of government policy. In the discussion for that episode, we talk about the idea of the state and again, use this scales framework to illustrate how government policy has influenced the built environment at various scales. Episode three is called Ant Architecture, Anarchic Alternatives. 
The introduction discusses how ants work together in sometimes surprising ways to solve the problems of their broader society, and raises some questions about ways in which humans could achieve similar successes. The main discussion looks back at some of the same scales that we've discussed in episode two, but instead of looking at governmental approaches to managing the built environment, we consider anarchic, non-governmental alternatives. As we said, those first three episodes really established kind of a conceptual framework for the rest of the podcast to follow. As we started to think about episodes four and five, we wanted to change up the tone a little bit to make it a little more conversational. The first few episodes are are pretty academic and maybe a little dry at times. And so for episodes four and five, we each chose a personal story that relates to questions of governmental versus anarchic approaches within the built environment. Episode four is entitled Tim's Solar Scam, where I tell the story about how my wife and I had solar panels put on the roof of our house and the fact that we took advantage of governmental tax and other incentives in order to do that. So does that make me some kind of a hypocrite? Episode five is called Joe's House of Doom. Really, I think the title says it all here. We don't want to give away any spoilers because it is a bit of a detective story. How do we know if our buildings are safe? We recommend listening to episodes one to three first, especially if you're not too familiar with the theories of anarchism. But if you're finding those a little too dry or academic, feel free to jump ahead to episodes four and five, which we're hoping are more representative of the more conversational tone of our podcast that we want to have moving forward. As we start thinking about where we want to take this podcast and what we want to achieve with it in the future, one of the reasons we started it was that we feel that there's a vast array of topics that we could cover. The built environment encompasses just about anything you can think of that's man-made, and depending on how broad a view we take of it, we could probably make an argument for talking about just about anything. However, there's a good chance that we'll end up focusing on areas that one or the other of us has some expertise in, in order to add some value to the conversation. I think a realistic target would be to release an episode maybe once every two months, which sounds a bit sparse, but realistically with the schedules that we have at the moment uh, it's probably about all we could really do while maintaining the sort of <laughs> the, the level of quality that you'll come to expect <laughs> yeah right until we get enough donations to quit our to quit our day jobs <laughs> yeah yeah start sending the bitcoin uh, but realistically I, I think at least you know for the foreseeable future if we do manage to get out more than one every two months then we'll be doing all right In order to do that, I think that moving forward, we're going to make an effort to have more kind of off-the-cuff discussions, which results in less editing, and hopefully results in a higher ratio of content to crap when we're sitting down to record. (laughs) (laughs) We'll probably look to do shorter episodes as well that are more focused on, on single topics. This could mean spotlights on certain projects or case studies, reviews of articles or movies or books, and possibly interviews with people who are more knowledgeable about a certain topic than we are. We might have to be doing a lot of interviews. (laughs) Some of the themes that we're likely to cover include the intersection of government with the built environment, and this could be anything from implications of policy to government planning of certain projects to other related issues such as eminent domain. We'd also like to highlight some real-life stories of an architecture, which would be maybe someone who has found a solution to some problem within the built environment without resorting to the means of government in order to achieve it. We'd also like to take a look both forwards and backwards in time, looking at the history of the built environment and how it has developed over time. And of course, the roles that government or individuals have played in developing it, as well as changes in technology and other trends that we see developing in the future. We'd also like to share the specific knowledge that we have in ways that could be useful to the listeners such as a how-to episode, or even just some inside baseball on what it's like in this industry so that people outside it can get a better understanding of it. But really, most of our discussion will focus on how the pyramids were built by ancient aliens. This An Architecture project is really more than just a podcast. I think the podcast is going to remain our primary focus, but we are planning to put up some blog posts to share links to other interesting articles that we find, and hopefully to create a forum for discussions on topics about the built environment. And you can find all of that at our website, which is 
an architecturepodcast.com. I mean, an architecturepodcast.com. You can also email us at info at an architecturepodcast.com. And to be clear, that's just one word all mashed together an architecturepodcast.com. Yeah, and we'll provide links to this on the show notes page as well. And let's face it, if you're listening to this, you've probably already found your way to it. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or if you're a nerd like me, you can use our RSS feed. And again, you can find links to all of those on the website. You can also find links to our Facebook page, Twitter, and other social media on our website, as well as sign up for our mailing list if you would like to receive regular updates by email. Thanks for checking out the Ann Architecture Podcast. We hope that you enjoy the show.